this video, we're going to kind of just go through this first, um, uncover some of its past here, go over what the car is. I have verified some stuff. I also have some issues with it before I start building it that I really need to address. Um, I have to be financially responsible, obviously, when I do this, so it'd be silly to throw a bunch of money into something that's just going to end up leaving me, uh, leaving me on the side of the road. So, um, like I said, in this video, we're just going to go through this thing, kind of show you around it, show you some of its history, where it came from, who the original owners were, and all that. Um, I found some pretty cool stuff on it. So. All right, guys, so right from the get-go, um, I did get a chance to clean it out some. It was just a quick clean. I threw all the trash away, vacuumed it out and stuff. Uh, I do have the door taken apart because this door wouldn't shut. As I said in the first video, the latch was a little rusted down in there. So I have it soaking with some PB Blaster and stuff, and uh, it seems to be working now really well. Um, it is a 92 Cadillac bog room, I think they say. I did get it tuned up. The dashboard will not turn on. Um, it used to work three years ago, I know. This was a Custer Mines car. It was a Custer Mines car, and uh, it worked, but I know the mileage never worked on it. So miles are totally unknown. I want to say it read like 130-something on it before, so it probably has a, a ton of miles on it. Radio doesn't work, AC doesn't work, fan doesn't work. It used to work, I did, uh, it did have cold AC back in the day um, when it was parked. So that may be something we get into, but we may be deleting the AC depending on the direction this car goes. Um, kinda cool for a 92, my 89 Lincoln's the same way. Like back in the day, these cars were super advanced. Uh, the power seats all work. Pretty wild that 92 they had all this stuff. Um, my 89 Lincoln's the same way. Hell, that car has automatic high beams. So when an oncoming car is coming, it shuts the high beams off. Really neat technology, pretty far advanced from back then. I mean, even nowadays cars barely have that, like your general cars. Um, obviously this is where the casket would go. Door panels are missing and stuff. It's dirty and grimy still. I really need to get back here. I'm going to gut all of this. Um, with the direction I want to go with the car, my ultimate goal here is to build kind of like a weekend drag car. Um, not a drag car, like a street car. Just have fun with it. Throw my kids in the back, go blast around town, drive it to the grocery store, mess with people, especially on Halloween. I think it'd be fun. It's not going to get driven much. It's a toy at the end of the day. So that's the direction. So as far as back here, I plan on gutting it and putting some sort of seating. Um, I would love to put a couple Kirkies, maybe like four Kirky race aluminum seats back here for my friends and everything. Um, same thing up here, throw two Kirkies and get rid of this wall here. Obviously back in the day, there used to be a glass panel here that would open and shut. Well, someone's busted that out. Um, that obviously separated the casket from the driving area. Uh, headliner is gone. I don't really care about that. Someone told me these cars weigh a ton, and I'm not sure I'd really love to put this thing across the scale, being all of this is fiberglass. All of the roof, all of the sides of the car, and I know fiberglass can weigh a lot, depending on how thick or how they made it. But when they did this conversion, I'm gonna shut it off here. I was just kind of showing, it does run great. The temperature is all fucked up, but it don't even get hot. It'll sit here and idle all day long. So that's pretty cool. Oh, actually, I want to show you all this quick. Original owner's manual still in the glove box. So obviously, that's all your Cadillac stuff. But the cool part is, this is the information from the company that did the hearse conversion. And it tells me, name of the builder. But this, SCI Blake Lamb Funeral Home, was the original owners. I looked them up. They're out of Chicago. They had 15 funeral homes, the Blake Lamb Funeral Home. SCI is kind of like a corporation that owns a bunch of funeral homes. So I think this car came out of Illinois. Um, I haven't done any, like, running the VIN or anything to see if I can find anything on that. But like I said, SCI is a huge company. Um, 
So it'd be cool if I could narrow it to exactly where this car came from, especially because I'm from Illinois. I'm born in Waukegan, just outside of Chicago. So that would be really cool to find out exactly. So it was built 1030-91, the invoice number, serial number, all that. Um, this paperwork, what was it? I think it's, yeah, quality protection plan, just the body type, the VIN of the car. Kind of just their warranty saying you're not buying a big old piece of crap. Um, got some decals in here saying the paint code, the paint color was Academy Gray. Um, year of the paint was 92. So I'm not sure if this car was gray or they're just considering this white on the car to be gray. Um, the car is still filthy, obviously. I haven't even washed it. But let me show you all some more. Um, like I said, I got that door to shut. I still got to figure out what I'm going to do with this rust if I decide to build this thing. This door is metal. This is all fiberglass. So the whole back of this thing, the roof all the way back is all fiberglass. So as far as the car weighing a ton, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna weigh more. I'm assuming it's gonna weigh more, but after I gut it, once again, the whole back door, let's see, fiberglass. That's fake blood, obviously. Don't worry about that. Um. Like I said before, this guy was a painter. He used it as a work car. Um, it worked out really well for him. So there was a hole in the floor. I already kind of started digging in there. It's kind of gross, honestly. You got this little foam liner here. That was probably for any juices. But as far as underneath, I don't know if you can see in there. Let's try to turn the phone upside down. It's gonna be a weird video, but there's nothing down there. It's wide open. So I'm going to gain a ton of room by taking that out to put seating in or whatever the hell I want to do. Um, like I said, I do at least want to add a couple more seats so my kids can come with because my kids can't ride in the Corvette because there's only one, one seat. So, uh, yeah, this is the back. No dents or nothing, obviously being fiberglass. The top's in decent shape. It's got some cuts and stuff here and there. Um, nothing crazy. That's good. Same thing. I got two hubcaps out of four. So those will be coming off. Um, man, I'd love if I could figure out something to do with those doors because they are heavy. So obviously down here, I'm not familiar with her, so I'm not sure if any of y'all are. <laughs> This is where the spire tire would be. I have no idea how far the floor hump goes back. So when I gut this, it'll be kind of cool to see exactly what's going on. But I'm assuming not too far, being the wheel wells only right there. So yeah, I haven't even pulled the spare tire out. Let's do that actually. Let's see. Anything jumps out at us? Nope. Once again, phone's going upside down. Sorry. Yeah, nothing's back there. What is that hole? It's not a hole, it's just a stain. Just a stain. So yeah, there's access both sides. So kind of neat. All right. It's shut good. Windows work. Mirrors work, obviously. I did find this cool little flag in the back. So that's definitely staying with the car. Anything that I find cool in the car stays with the cars. That's how all my cars are. All my lights work, all that. So let's go under the hood and then I can start kind of getting into what I got going on here. All right, so don't mind all the oil. I'll explain that in a minute. So according to Cadillac in 1992, this car was offered with a Chevy 350 or a Chevy 305. Um, they were roller motors back then, so that's awesome. One piece remained seals, which is awesome. Four tech head, center bolt valve covers. So that's all really good news. So it being a Hearst, I was like, man, it's gotta be. A Chevy 350. Why would they put a 305 in something like this? Well, unfortunately, according to the VIN number, the emission sticker, and I found the block numbers and ran them, it is a 305. 
Um, so that kind of sucks. A little disappointing, but you know what? I'm still gonna do what I want to do with it. Build the shit out of it. Um, the whole goal in this thing is budget, budget, budget. See what we can build. Um, like I said, AC used to work. So, now the dilemma. The transmission. The 700 R4. I drove the car home. I'm sure I'm going to turn the phone around here. Alright, I drove the car home. So it sat for three years. I jump started it, it actually started, and we just said, let's go. We didn't check nothing. So, my buddy's following me. Drop it and drive, start driving down the road. And it's taken forever to come out of first gear. Whatever, it's been fucking sitting. Finally shifts out of first gear, bam, second gear. Third gear, fourth gear. Everything's going good. The train starts to make a whining noise. Wah, like a power steering pump when it runs out of fluid. Whatever. My biggest thing is don't stop. Just get home. The battery says it's not charging. I just worried about getting this thing home so I'm not broke down the side of the road. So, we get home. No big deal. Still shifting. Pull it in here. Good to go. Uh, I go to town, I got a new battery over here, my buddy got it uh, warranted because the battery wasn't even that old in the car, it's just stone dead and wouldn't take a charge anymore. So, here's the problem. I start the car the next day, go to move it, shifts out of gear, perfect, everything's going good. I let the car sit here and warm up after I checked all the fluids, added a little bit of coolant engine oil, just topped things off. So if the car sits for more than 40 seconds, the transmission loses all gears. If it sits still, it loses all gears. No forward reverse, nothing. It just fucking nothing. So I was like, damn, trans just went out in this thing. I shut the key off. I have literally timed it. You wait eight seconds and you restart it. Boom. Start it up, put it in gear. I have all your gears back unless you stop for more than 30 seconds. So I have tested, I've tested, and I was like, oh, maybe the filter fell down and it's aerating, sucking air instead of all the fluid. That's why the pump's whining like a power steering pump. So we threw a bunch of transmission fluid in this thing. Uh, it didn't help. It just started puking out the vent. It was a fucking mess. Hence all the transmission fluid in the engine bay. I've spilt so much, getting frustrated. So I posted in the 700R forum. Everyone's like, oh, your filter's clogged. Well, unfortunately, we put this trans in, and we put this filter in four years ago or so, who knows how many miles. So I'm like, okay, well, I took a trans sample. I took like five quarts out of this thing, and it is full of metal. Um, I'll put a little video here of where I took that sample or what it looks like so y'all can see. So, whatever. At this point, this was last night, and I was like, the car's done. It's not worth me putting a transmission in it. It's a budget build. 700R4s are extremely expensive. They're expensive even. They're weak. Um, they don't hold power well, and that's the whole goal. It's like, me to push power through this thing and make it fun. So I was like, maybe I'll do a turbo 350 swap. It's kind of going in the opposite direction, but they're a lot cheaper. Um, you can actually buy a kit. It's 200 bucks, so the Turbo 350 will bolt right in place. I won't have to change my drive shaft, nothing. So I've been weighing all my options. I've even thought about taking the motor out of the Corvette, the 350 out of the Chevy Corvette over here, taking the manual trans and putting it in this thing, making a manual turboed Hurst. So been going back and forth. And if I do that, then the Corvette's gonna be LS swapped. Um, I'm gonna do a two-speed power glide and obviously a turbo. Um, LS, probably a 5.3 or even a 4.8. I don't care. I just want to do fun things. So I'm weighing all my options. Um, it fucking sucks, honestly. I really, really wanted to build this thing and do all that. So I'm not trying to drag this video on. I feel like I'm going on too long. Um, essentially, get back to today. Come out to the car. I drained all the tranny fluid, so I put the tr old tranny fluid back in it, just because at this point, I'm going to go drive the fucking thing out into the weeds and park it next to all my other cars out there. 
they can die out in the weeds and if I need a part or if I need a good 305 I got one throw a bunch of fluid in the trans I haven't even checked it the fucking dipstick's not even in it well I was like you know what I'm, I'm gonna let it run I'm, I'm gonna let it run and see what it does well, sure enough, I ran it over 15 minutes today, sitting still, everything, it is shifting flawlessly. So I have no idea what the hell is going on with this trans. So at this point, guys, we are going to pick up a trans filter tomorrow. We're going to pick up a bunch of tranny fluid, and we are going to swap the filter, swap the gasket, fill it up, and see where we're at. Um, I don't want to give up hope on this car. I think it's a really cool car and has tons of potential. I think it could be really fun and a blast to just fuck around town and, I don't know, piss people off, I guess. Um, it's going to be loud, it's going to be obnoxious, it's going to have a giant cam. Uh, it's not going to be fast, I can tell you that. I mean, I'll try to make it as fast as I possibly can, but at the end of the day, it's still a giant hearse. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing with the car. So, yeah, guys, there you have it. Um, just a little lowdown. Um, hopefully in a couple days or maybe even tomorrow I'll have another video. We'll swap out that train yet or trans filter and we will see what happens. Um, if I get it to run and drive and shift and everything, I think I'm going to throw some insurance on it and get a plate for it. And we will go and mob around town for a little bit, see how it does. Um, what I like to do personally when I build cars, I don't like to disable them. I like to do little things at a time so that way I can go do this, go test drive, go do this, go test drive. Because if you change too much shit at once, you don't know where you went wrong. So uh, that's the plan for it. If the trans comes back, I do want to turbo it someday. If I'm going to do it right now, I'm not exactly sure because I'm not sure if I'm going to upgrade the Corvette. And if I do that, I will take the turbo off the Corvette and put it on this and put a bigger turbo on the Corvette. Um, the Corvette's obviously my favorite car, and that's like my priority over everything here. So, all these other cars, they're uh, kind of just fillers. Um, unfortunately, when you have a bunch of cars, you get burned out of working on them, and you just move on to the next car, and then you get tired of that one, and you go back to that one. So, that's where I'm at with that. So, yes, anyway, real quick, definitely going to do a cam. Um, make it lopy. We'll see what the trans does. Um, smog pump delete, AC delete, heat delete, uh, bare bones, 100%. That's it. All this extra bullshit you see, it's all going to go away. Hell, I might even pull the wheel wells out just to have a giant empty engine bay. Um, it's not going to be a daily driver. It's not going to be anything like that. Just drive it. I probably will drive it in the rain. I don't drive the Corvette in the rain just because the turbo is wide open. Um, and if I turbo this, I don't know if the turbo, it, it might clear the hood, but it probably won't. So we'll just cut a fucking hole as usual. Um, yeah, I did throw a bunch of, uh, fuel injector cleaner in it. I did throw some tranny fix in it as vice grip garage would say in a little, uh, Italian tune up we did there. Um, and that's it. I haven't added any gas to it. So whatever's in it is three years old and I have no idea how much is in it because the cluster doesn't work. And that's where we're at. Alright guys, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry if this video is long. I just kind of want to give an update on the old Cadillac first here. And uh, hopefully this trans comes back to life and we can get it going and uh, make a cool little project. Um, Y'all can follow along, post a bunch of videos on it and see what, see what we can come up with. Thanks.